Welcome back, everybody, to the second part of this special Euro News event. Now we are going to debate what next for Europe. Taking part are Monica Frassoni of the Greens, Nigel Farage from Independence and Democracy, Graham Watson of the European Liberal and Democratic Alliance, Christiana Muscadini for the Union for a Europe of Nations, Martin Schulz of the European Socialists, Francis Wurtz for the European United Left, Monsieur Joseph, Joseph Dahl for the Popular Party. Now we are going to concentrate on the horizon for the next legislature. And my first question is, without the Lisbon Treaty, what can Parliament and Europe achieve? Would you like to start the ball rolling, Mr Farage? You know, two countries voted no to the Constitution. Uh, so they repackaged it, they changed the name, they called it the Lisbon Treaty, and the only country that had a vote voted no. Um, just as before, of course, only two countries had a vote on the euro, and they both voted no. <laughs> the fact is, what these people around this table represent is a political class of people who believe in these institutions, and that's fine. But the peoples of Europe increasingly don't, and I, it's very difficult to call this European election, it really is, but I do think the level of protest vote is going to be absolutely enormous. Graham Watson, do you think that one day we will get this Lisbon Treaty and the Constitution in one revised form or another following its initial rejection? I think we'll get to the Lisbon Treaty. There are those who oppose it. There are some organizations fighting it, perhaps financed by the extreme right in America, which doesn't want to see European development. But it's clear that at the same time the vast majority of Europeans want this development. Because we know we're stronger when united and poorer when we're not. In my opinion, it's very probable the Lisbon Treaty will be adopted, but we may have to wait another six months to get it. Monica well, I want to say from the start that it's just not true to say people have said no to more Europe in their lives. That's wrong. In my opinion, this idea that on one side you have the people and on the other the members of the European Parliament is completely false. Whether we like it or not, we represent the people here, so Europe's citizens have to be motivated and mobilized to get out and vote and express their feelings. The Lisbon Treaty is a small step towards improving our institutions and the way they work. So it will be good to get Lisbon, but the history of Europe's democratic transformation doesn't end there. I think, however, if we don't get it, it will be very difficult to do anything important or positive, notably on climate change, at an international level. Mr. Doll, do you think the next legislature of the European Parliament will be the one that cleans up the fallout from the three referendums that said no to European treaties? I believe that the French presidency showed that we also know how to work under the existing Nice Treaty. We did some good work and even achieved unanimity. Of course, the Lisbon Treaty is needed for more progress and better European management, but Europe doesn't disappear if the Nice Treaty remains the framework agreement. I don't want groups like Mr Farage's thinking that if Lisbon fails, then Europe disappears. No, Europe will continue. Our citizens expect us to solve their problems, and it's centre-right governments who are currently in power in every country who are advancing and proposing answers. Little parties have no say, no responsibility, nothing to do with this, so they can say what they like. That's the difference between serious politicians and those who spout rubbish because they have no alternative policies to propose, or don't want to. Mr. Wurtz, is she talking about you? Do you feel partially responsible for this situation? You were, after all, against the Constitution. I come from a country where the majority of its citizens did vote against the proposed European Constitution, and I was active in the No campaign. So I will explain myself. 
But I should stress I totally disagree with Mr Farage's view. It's another example of there not being just the yes camp and the no camp. It's far more complicated. OK, but effectively the result is the same. The problem lies in the liberal economic model. It's in the Nice Treaty and in Lisbon. It's in the Constitution as it was in the Maastricht Treaty. That's what needs to be changed. It is this that lies at the heart of what I call the crisis of legitimacy. Do you feel that both treaties on the Constitution, first of all, and Lisbon, are both neoliberal documents? Those who believe that Lisbon or the Constitution have less of a social dimension than the Nice Treaty we operate under today haven't read them. Let's be clear about this. They are both more, not less, concerned with social policies. It's not everything we wished for, but it's still progress. But allow me, if you will, to say something about democracy. Farage belongs to a group that's always going on about legitimacy via referendum. But he ignores the fact some countries have no tradition of such a vote where international treaties are concerned. And he maintains parliamentary ratification is less valid than a referendum. I don't think that's acceptable. There's a nation that's outside the EU, has no tradition of referendums, but is nonetheless very democratic. It's called America. Germany has no tradition of holding referendums, and I'll tell you why. In Germany, I have always been against them. Imagine if enlargement had been subject to... Well, maybe you should listen first and laugh afterwards. So I'll start again. Imagine if Germany had held referendums on Polish, Czech or other new members. I don't think it would have been a good idea if Germany had held European enlargement hostage to referendums. The ratification in both houses of the German parliament was absolutely democratic. My last comment, Mr Farage, is that there were four referendums on the Constitution. One in the Netherlands, lost. One in France, lost. And two others. In Spain, 72% voted yes. And in Luxembourg, the yes vote was 60%. In all the countries that held referendums, the majority voted for the Constitution. Do you respect that democracy, Mr Farage? Mr. Schultz, what, what you're saying, Mr. Schultz, the implications of what you're saying for the whole concept of democracy is truly terrifying. You're saying we mustn't ask the German people what they think, we must lead them. I mean, this is, this is terrifying. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget, the day after the Irish voted no, you in that chamber said we must not bow to populism. I, mean, I hope you will now apologise for that comment. It is an absolutely... You are, you are not just... You are anti-democratic. You believe a ruling class knows what's best for ordinary people. Oh, it's an honour to be called anti-democratic by you. Thank you. You are.